Yo, what up? Today I'm gonna to talk about five or four or six or three, depending on how we get on, things that I wish I knew before I got saved. I don't know about you, but I, I made myself look quite silly a few times. I definitely gave myself a lot of anxiety. I definitely said some things I shouldn't have said, as I still do every now and then. As a result, of not being particularly wise or just not having received the right advice yet. I was very fortunate to be around a great man of God a lot when I first got saved and that blessed me and I, and I go to a great church and I had some good people but it doesn't mean to say I wasn't exposed and, and part of that process is kind of important because it is humbling. I mean you, you get to looking like John the Baptist in, in a college ethics class man like you, you say some crazy things and today i'm going to talk about a few things that i wish i knew when i first got saved it would have saved me uh some heartache and some uh some confusion okay so number one the blood of jesus is always gonna be the thing the grace of god is always going to be the thing that restores you yeah when you first get saved it's because you receive his grace through faith and you get covered in the blood of Jesus. The blood of the lamb covers you the same way it covered the children of Israel in Egypt in Moses' day. You are part of the family. You can't lose your salvation. You cannot. It's a guaranteed seal. You didn't earn it. You got it by faith and you got born again and became that part of that family. So here's the issue though. You do that and you think you'll never sin again. You might not say that, but in your mind, your mind's like, oh, I'm born again, I'm good. And then something happens and you slip up and you automatically go back to works for two reasons. Partly, you don't think you deserve the grace because you got it once and you wasted it, you used it up. Secondly, the world works like that. People don't forgive you more than once, typically. You've got a number of chances and then it's over with. They lose faith in you. They cut the relationship off. They basically say, you're not faithful, so I'm not gonna be faithful. And that actually makes sort of mathematical sense to human beings. But that's not how the kingdom of God works. It's not a works mindset, it's a faith mindset. And even in moments where you lose your faith a little bit, when you're part of that family, God promised that he would be faithful. Your salvation is irrelevant to your ability to be faithful. You see what I'm saying? That sounds like blasphemy, but it's not. Like you can literally get saved with your heart and mean it. I, you know, I still to this day have problems with my faith and I always will because I'm a human. I have a flesh. I'm impatient. I'm forgetful. You know, you're going to struggle with that. But one thing I struggled with when I first got saved, I kept running away from the blood of Jesus and I thought I had to go out and earn back my position in the kingdom uh, but once you're called you're called man like like that's just the, the truth of the matter you know once you're chosen you're chosen man that's just the truth of the matter um, so always go back to the blood of Jesus and it is the same now the, the one thing when I'm in turmoil emotionally spiritually physically I'm in a jam have no peace no joy the thing I always go back to is the blood of Jesus the reckless love of God the goodness of God that leads me to repentance that is always going to be the thing you're never going to graduate from that i don't care how mature you get you're never going to graduate from the love and grace of god and the blood of jesus that was bled for you the personal sacrifice of jesus christ you're never going to get past that to the point where he expects more and that's not the thing that unlocks you not only because it's so powerful it supersedes and surpasses all your sins but because it brings you to your knees. It brings you to repentance. That's the thing that brings you to repentance. It humbles you. Your works ain't gonna humble you. Your work's gonna exalt you. You humble yourself and then God exalts you on a godly level, or you can exalt yourself on your own level and just live in just guilt and eventually falsehood because you're gonna start lying about the way you feel and what your life really is. The blood of Jesus is always the answer. Always go back to the blood of Jesus every time. The most mature pastor or man or woman of God that you know, the blood of Jesus is what keeps them. The grace of God is what keeps them. They go back to that every time. Never think that it's something else that you go on to the next level and it, no, no, no. The, the kingdom of God and our ability to be a part of it is built off God's faithfulness and the blood that was spilt before you were even born into your flesh body. Yeah, you're born again, you're part of that family, it's a done deal, it's the blood of Jesus every time. Never, ever, ever, ever forget that. Always go back to that. The, the, the moment you try and bypass it, well, yeah, but it doesn't, it's not relevant to this sin or it's not relevant to this feeling. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Every single time, without fail, take it to the bank, all right? Now, this is a good one 
for my fellow believers who are also YouTubers. And I, I see a ton of this. I got saved in 2019, so three and a half years ago, the summer of 2019. I've been wanting to do YouTube for a while. The reason I only started now and the reason I still haven't gone over my testimony is because I know I'm still processing my testimony. A lot of people think when you get saved, your testimony's over. And they tell me the testimony about, it's typically this. It was hard, I had a really hard time here. I got saved and now I'm great. Bull crap. No, that's not how it goes. Your testimony carries on. If and when I do a testimony video, it will have at least three episodes. Pre-Christ, during Christ, and post-salvation. Okay, that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be my before Christ story, my salvation story, how I got saved or, or when it really culminated. And the Holy, I got the Holy Spirit, you know, all of that. I got baptized in the Spirit when I gave my life to Christ. And then from here on out, because it's actually been harder because I've had to actually struggle with things. I didn't struggle with lust before I got saved. I just did it. I didn't struggle. You thought I felt guilty after masturbating before I was saved? Hell no. Nah. I could care less. There's more things you engage with afterwards. Your testimony's not over. Don't belittle your testimony by just telling me about how you got saved, when you got saved, and thinking that it's over ever since. No, your testimony continues. That keeps you humble, gives you perspective, and it also gives you hope because there'll be times, if your testimony's over and it's all supposed to be peaches and cream now, and something happens and something goes down, and you think that you're the only person, it's like, well, this feels like, you know, trials and tribulations. It's promised. Sometimes even more happens after you get saved. And not just, I used to do crack. It's not just that. It's you know, th this, this happened in my life. God walked me through this crazy thing that I've been dealing with in my mind. This is how I achieve peace. This is how I learned to love. This is how this, this scripture changed my life. All of that. So don't discredit your testimony by limiting it to when you got saved. Okay, this one's going to hurt some feelings. Your church family is going to hurt you one day. They're going to, in some way, disappoint you, right? I'm not saying they're going to, you know, bully you steal your car sleep with your wife no i'm saying uh, uh first of all they might secondly um no i mean like they're going to disappoint you they're not god i think a lot of people get saved i remember i was watching this one girl's testimony a beautiful testimony amazing woman of god she's quite young i think she was in her early 20s she said and you know i'm just uh, i love my church people now i'm just so glad that i'm around people that will never hurt me or do me wrong and i was like oh no 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 look what they're people. They're gonna throw up all over you, spiritually speaking. Like they're gonna, they're gonna hurt you. Like they're gonna disappoint you. They're gonna mess you up. And it's the love that God's gonna bring out of you that's gonna fix it. Yeah, it's the spirit of God in between you guys that's gonna make that okay. Yeah, don't get into a marriage with a godly woman who you've been to church with your whole life and expect her never to sin against you. I'm not saying everybody's gonna cheat, but there's gonna be a little pain. There's going to be a slight betrayal. There's going to be some dishonesty. Yeah, because God wants you to know that first of all, he's the only one that's righteous. Not one person is righteous. And secondly, you don't know what them people in the church are like, first of all. Even the most saved, actually good person like could really hurt you. But there's people in that church that are dangerous. Like they're wolves, okay? So stay guarded, stay with God be wise choose wisdom wisdom stands on the street and says come like, like and everybody walks past it choose wisdom okay don't choose people okay choose to love people and choose relationships but choose wisdom in all that you do so that when people do you wrong you don't just collapse and are destroyed no you were relying on god and you're okay and you can still love those people despite the fact that they hurt you and disappointed you because you know church people are going to disappoint you just like regular people and, and sometimes worse so don't don't think that church people won't hurt you okay this is one i was kind of guilty of so when i got saved i used to eat in the cafeteria every day at college right i was in uh, i was a fifth year senior i wasn't even supposed to be there i'm giving away secrets to my testimony right now but um i remember just somebody would say something crazy bearing in mind like three weeks ago i was living the same life like it literally it, it, it was that quick going from doing it to hating it and still secretly wanting to do it but like hating it because i was like hey, it's just not holy like it's not holy 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 like i remember people saying stuff and i would look at them like wouldn't want wouldn't want to talk to them. provide more grace than your newfound 
capacity to perceive and feel and understand sin suggests you do. Always err on the side of giving people grace. And this is something I gotta to preach to myself. I don't give people enough grace. I don't, I don't, I slam the gavel down on people in a way that God would never do to me. So I'm still working on this for sure. And I, I you know, it's very hard to be as full of grace as God is. But one thing I would say is always err on the side of giving those around you grace, especially unsaved people. Because when they look at you crazy, because you're condemning them in a crazy John the Baptist wild way, just know that I'm going to look at you like you're crazy too, because you're tripping. You're not leading with love. Always err on the side of grace when somebody is sinning in front of you. Uh, you know, I'm not saying let people do stuff to you or to other people. No, stand up for people, be righteous. But if you've been talking with your buddy about girls for the last three years and about sex, and he says something crude at the table, and you got saved two weeks ago, you can't look at him crazy. You Maybe you laugh, you shake your head, and you just don't engage with it the way you used to, and you kind of move on, and you kind of pray for him. Pr always pray more than you criticize. Pray more than you condemn. Love them in that way, that brings them to it. You changing it, hmm, da -da -da -da, leading with pride and arrogance. First of all, it's gonna make you look stupid because you might fall again. But careful where you stand lest you fall. And second of all, it doesn't bring people to Christ. People don't feel loved in that area, and, and it's love that brings you to salvation. I'm yet to hear of somebody getting saved and in their testimony they say what saved them was the rules and the wrath no no it's the goodness of god that brings man to repentance other the translations say the kindness of god that brings man to repentance okay and this is one that is not just for those who just got saved this can be for people walking for a while but it's definitely true for those who just got saved sometimes it's going to look like you're getting worse sometimes it's going to look like a certain sin returns crazier than before because you've taken care of yourself and now when this relapse has happened your emotions have just run wild or your flesh has just run wild it's like a i don't know if you've ever seen a relapsing heroin addict they're far worse than when they're just users it's really bad okay and it's same with sin when you relapse on sin or on a, a mistake in your thought patterns or a mistake in your soul just bringing the wrong things into your soul or just holding on to the wrong things or you lose your peace for the first time in a while because you're tripping off the wrong thing or you fall into pride for the first time in a while it's going to look like you got worse it's going to look like you got worse but you didn't you're just more conscious of it and the devil is now on your behind the devil actually now hates you uh and he always hated you but now he hates what you're trying to do for the world and for the kingdom so he's coming at you harder and also the bible says that when a demon is cast out of somebody when it comes back to the empty house it comes back with seven more. It does not mean God has forsaken you. Okay, the antidote to this is knowing the word, knowing that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, knowing that he knew this day was ordained for you before it even came to be, knowing that his hand is on you, knowing not to be dismayed, knowing all these things, knowing the Bible, and not just religiously speaking, no, believing what it says about you and having that in your soul, having the word of God as a defining feature of your life and the way you see yourself and the way you see your God. If I'm going from here to here, sometimes the road is like this but it doesn't mean I ain't getting there, right? It's not always, ooh, I just got gradually better forever. No, it's gonna look like you get worse sometimes. And another one is this, favor, which is something as a new believer that you hear about and you're like, what? Like I get favor, like God actually favors me? I love that and it's true, but favor doesn't always look like the way you think it's gonna look. You will still lose in this life with favor, you will you will still lose with favor. Every now and then, God's gonna let you lose. Just ultimately, you will have the victory. And there will be times where you get unfair favor where God just chooses you. That happens, okay, like legit. However, that, yeah, I can't guarantee it's always gonna happen. If I were you, I would focus far more on walking with God and knowing that it will work out for your betterment. Yeah, knowing that all things work for the good for those who love the lord and are called according to his purpose just know that favor looks different sometimes people are going to overtake you in a career sometimes people are going to hit the jackpot on their wife and you're just still there single sometimes they're going to do us forget about them comparison is not wise okay favor doesn't always look the way you think just know that you are favored and that god will do what you need done for you himself 
and rest in his favor, rest in his love. Yeah, your only labor should be to enter his rest. And it's very hard to do that when you expect his favor to look like you winning every time. That's how you start trying to manipulate God. That's how you start trying to win every single season of your life. No, you've got to sow some stuff. You've got to be buried. And then one of the first things he does is uh, throws you in the fire because he's trying to refine you as gold. Or he can treat you like perfect plastic and you can be plastic and fake and you can wither as soon as you get put in the fire. Favor doesn't always look like, you know, first place, first place, first place. No, no, no. Sometimes you're going to come last and you're going to look a little bit silly. Um, but it's okay. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. I'm a living testimony of that. So, um, and look, I just want to pray out because I feel as though I don't pray enough on this channel. I want to pray for all new believers and all new people coming to the kingdom. Lord, I pray that you would hold them. Lord, I pray you would surround them with people that love them and have their best interests at heart. Lord God, I pray in Jesus name that your spirit would fill them and that you would help them be aware of the amount of sheer love you have for them. You would be the ever present force for them. Lord, I know you're going to be faithful. Lord, I thank you already in advance for your faithfulness towards them. I pray in Jesus name that you help them remember how faithful you are and to seek your face and to seek your wisdom Lord God I pray that these new believers would choose wisdom I pray that these old believers would remember your goodness and remember your faithfulness I pray in Jesus name that your faithfulness would be the thing that we lean on the thing that we hold on to not our own actions or our own works Lord God I pray that you would help us remember that we are under the grace covenant and not the covenant of the law anymore Lord God we thank you for fulfilling all your promises and we pray this in the name of Jesus amen all right that's been it y'all if you can like subscribe comment send to somebody look i'm trying to grow this channel i'm going to keep pumping out videos so tune in man because look i enjoy it i love it and i love what god's doing with this um and you know uh, i'm having a great time so i really appreciate you thank you very much i'll speak to you soon